Season seven, how excited are you? Pretty excited. I mean, every year it's different. I mean, the thing about Shark Tank is no two deals are alike, no two entrepreneurs are the same. Every time the door opens, I see something completely different than I've seen in all the seasons previous. And this year, what I'm noticing, the size of the deals is bigger than ever because people know that if they can get on Shark Tank, sales go up 10,000%. So about that, getting on Shark Tank and sales going up, there's been a lot more people that have maybe been coming just for the PR of the show that might not want to deal. How does that, does that make you feel not cool, like that they do that? We call them, we call deals like that gold diggers, and yeah. we are able to spot them right away. If they come in with ridiculous proposals and evaluations that no one would invest in, that's a gold digger. But there's less and less because the producers have figured out how to weed them out. We are not going to invest in them. And so, you know, I, it's, I think it's going to be less and less of a problem. Everybody knows this. You can come on Shark Tank once and be a gold digger, but you don't have a long-term effect. You need to come into, you need to be able to get a deal with a shark and become part of the Shark Tank ecosystem so that you're followed year after year. So if you don't score a deal, you're going to be a pop in the flash in the pan idea. You're just going to be there for once. You'll get a lift in sales, but it'll just fade away. Getting a deal means you're around forever and your business keeps growing. So I'm not worried about gold diggers. Right. Now, do you think that, you know, some people say with athletes, it's like a talent you're born with. Do you feel like entrepreneurs, it's something that's in your genes or that anyone can learn to be a successful entrepreneur? I think anybody can learn. It's about risk tolerance. It's about the ability to understand that you're going to take a chance. You could fail, and many do, and then you get up and you try it again. The reason you want to be an entrepreneur is not about greed of money. It's about the pursuit of personal freedom. The wonderful thing about success in America is it means you're free. You're free to give to charities, free to support your children, free to do things you want to do with your time. That's what's great about it, and the most important thing is you create jobs. It's the most noble pursuit we have in America, and so everybody, and I encourage them to try it, not everybody will make it, but if you do, you've done something wonderful for our country, and you've also created something for yourself. Now, I've read, and I know everything I read is not true, but I read that uh, most of your businesses that are profitable right now in the portfolio are led by women. Is that true and can you speak to that of what that means for women to try more and get involved and, and believe in themselves to create these businesses? Yes, um, what happened, this is rather an interesting story because over the years I formed like every other shark my own venture capital company, it's called O'Leary Ventures. All of my deals including my Shark Tank deals go into that company. And so every year the auditors come in and say which ones are successful, which are failing, we're going to write off the losers. That's the nature of venture investing. So this year the auditor said to me, look, why don't you go figure out over these six years what is the common attribute, if there is any, about all these ones that are successful? I said, that's a good idea. So I had my people do it. And then a month later, we found this out, which really, really was amazing. Not some of my returns, all of my returns came from companies run by women. What is it about women running small and mid-cap companies? Because that's what we fund on Shark Tank. What attribute do they have that make them so successful? You know, there's an old adage that says, if you want something done, give it to a busy mother. And maybe their ability to manage time is really, really important for running those companies. But what stunned me is it's not some of my success, it's all of it. So from now on, I'm going to invest in more women. It's that simple. I love that. I did, I did read that it was all of them, but I, you know, the article was a few months ago, so I didn't want to be wrong. No, but think about it. It's, yeah. it's Bottle Breach, run by Sarah and her team. Wicked Good Cupcakes, two women run that. Jen, you know, I mean, they're, all these companies, and this is not, you know, gray, it's black and white. They're all sending checks to me every month. It, it's, it's wow. Like, that's a really interesting, you know, in America, we're not, we don't have enough women running companies. That's what I'm taking out of this. You know, we need more women CEOs, not because of any other reason except they're really successful. They give amazing returns to shareholders. That's what I've learned. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really look forward to season seven. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. That's great. Come All right. On over.